When I came here, I was a boy, and now I'm leaving a man. I won't take much of your time. Just need someone to talk to. That's yeah, I grew up in a small industrial town in Texas called Lake Jackson, uh, centered around Dow Chemical Plant. Uh, you know, it's about an hour south of Houston. The name, The Lights from the Chemical Plant, uh, kind of represents what I think most of the album does or what I want it to do, uh, which is kind of highlight some of this gray area of ethics and morality. Um, I like the symbol and the image of the lights from the chemical plant because I think instinctively and immediately it sounds kind of industrial and dirty and nasty and uh, with the song I wanted to do kind of exactly the opposite, show how beautiful they were and, and what, a, what a nice metaphor it is for a relationship and, and for a life. You know? And as a kid, you know, everybody's dad that I knew worked at that chemical plant or for some subsidiary of it. So it's kind of, I think of it as kind of the driving force behind the town. That's why everybody moved there in the first place, you know. Most people that grew up uh, in a small Texas town like that, uh, I think, go insane of boredom because <laughs> there's just not much to do there, which is probably why I picked up guitar in the first place. Uh, my mother was a piano player and teacher, so I was a little tiny kid when I started playing. And I really took to it probably around fifth or sixth grade and became obsessed with guitar and, uh, you know, wanted to shred. still in Lake Jackson, I met this guy named Reese, uh, who played in a band called The Disasters, Roger Murray and The Disasters. Roger was in a band called Agnostic Front, and I think <laughs> I think that was my first touring gig playing bass. I did a tour with them, yeah, when I was really young, and uh, yeah, it was really weird. I had, I had long hair at the time, and I put my hair up into like a little punk rock hat, and uh, yeah, so that was like my first real taste of... Um, you know, kind of national touring, just that one tour with them, and then I had like a high school band, and we did little Texas tours and things like that. Um, but I knew from an early age that's what I wanted to do. It's it's still kind of where I feel most at home. Nobody talks too loud in my hometown. Nobody stands too tall for fear of getting knocked. As soon as I could uh, legally do it, I dropped out of high school and decided I was just going to play music full time. Uh, I had a lot of pressure from family and friends to kind of go to college and maybe go the traditional schooling route and then play music after that. But I really just didn't see much precedent for that in the real world. Most of the touring musicians that I knew kind of did a similar thing to me where they just, that's all you do is try to play music. So it seems counterintuitive to me that if you want to play music, you should go to school for eight years and then once you're halfway through your 20s, start playing music. From Lake Jackson, I moved to Houston when I was maybe 18 years old. It was great. Uh, I pretty quickly found a music community of players that I, that I really liked and uh, I started working at a Whole Foods there and had an apartment and I moved there with my girlfriend at the time. Um, so we, we smoked weed pretty much 24-7 and I tried to play music and write songs and worked at Whole Foods and uh, for a little while it was really fun. And then eventually after about a year I got a gig teaching guitar and I quit the Whole Foods thing. And me and this girl split up shortly after that. And, uh, you know, right around that time, I put out my first record and started touring on that. Just to teach him right from wrong. You can burn in hell the rest of your days, or you can choose to sing along. Sing along. I technically live in Nashville, but it's kind of just a place where I keep all my crap because um, I've been on the road so much. So, uh,. I end up talking about it probably more than I actually end up spending time there, <laughs> you know? Because doing all these interviews and everything, everybody asks about it, but um, I like it, it's a cool town. 
I mean, Nashville, because of the industry that's there, made recording really great and easy. You know, great studios, great players, um, people like Jakir King and Eric Massey, who are killer at their job. Um, and, you know, how cheap it is to live there made it really easy for me to have the whole band at my house and, you know, afford to have food and things like that and spend our money on important stuff. About the way things end. You can sit and wait for the resurrection But a child believes in whatever they're told I hope that people appreciate the songwriting and I hope that they appreciate the musicianship. I think the players and, and what Kelly and Will and Josh and Joffrey do on it is um, musically really interesting. And, and I hope people also appreciate the sort of ambiguity style-wise and, and kind of can hear influences that are, you know, somewhat rooted in where I come from, like country music and things like that, but hopefully they'll also hear some of the, some of the jazz stuff we listen to or some of the free stuff or rock and roll or, you know, all that stuff. Sing along. Sing along. Sing along.